lizards, but big lizards, and gorillas, but slightly larger gorillas, is the movie that we watched today. Here we are again, but today I am joined by Laugh Twows. Hello, it's so amazing and great to be here. I'm so excited. As we all are for this very groundbreaking movie where two big monsters find each other and the plot just dies. We're not here about using your brains, we're here to discuss what team were you on? Were you a Team Godzilla type of guy or were you a Team Kong type of guy? Do you like Big Monk or do you like Big Lizard? I, you know what, I, I did kind of was watching the Godzilla vs. King Kong thing, but mostly I was watching for Millie Bobby Brown. I was really Team Millie. I was kind of focused, like zoned in on her. So you really like the human elements of these stories, I see. I mean, that's why you watch it, right? You don't watch it for the monsters. To be fair, I think you got quite a few good uh, human elements in this movie. I, I don't know if I want to call them characters per se, but they were definitely human in essence and they were in the movie and they spoke lines. I, I really enjoyed how the two subplots of Team Godzilla and Team Kong didn't really connect. At the end of the movie, I was kind of somehow expecting them to bump into each other, have any sort of like connection or communication, but they never really interact. Yeah, that's really weird how it never kind of connects in the end. I was also expecting it just because, you know, it's like what a movie usually does. But uh, I guess Millie's plot, uh, Millie and Paperboy and uh, the Asian, he wasn't Asian. Why do I think he's Asian? He's from New Zealand, you blind, blind man. No, what? I mean, their plot didn't go anywhere. It kind of culminated with Mr. New Zealand pouring some coffee in, or not coffee. What the fuck does he pour? It was whiskey, I think. Hey, what are you? That's your solution? That's it. That's how it all pays off. Did you like how this movie had a weird opening, how it essentially opens the same exact way as Shrek? We have the almost beat by beat of that opening, but with Kong instead of Shrek. I mean, if you're gonna copy, you might as well copy from the best, so I'm glad that it was Shrek and not like Shrek 2 or 3. Excuse you, Shrek 2 is a classic and you're just wrong, but that's fine. <laughs> what was your favorite side character so we can focus on them? Oh, you know who my favorite side character was? Lance Reddick. Do you see a scene in the film? Lance Hedrick? Google Lance Reddick right now. Oh, fine. Oh, yeah. Okay, I know who you're talking about. He has one line. He says something like, this is the day we feared. This is the day we feared. So the man that was in one scene was your favorite character. <laughs> I just don't know why they had a famous actor just come in and like have one line. But yeah, I really liked this scene. I thought he killed it. He stole the movie as far as I'm concerned. This is the day we feared. I think my favorite character in the whole movie was the guy who made a Tide Pod joke in 2021. This isn't one of those internet challenge things because when I saw those kids, those detergent pods, I didn't know they were gonna eat them. Dude, I was lolling so effing hard when I heard that. It was super funny, super topical. Yeah, I actually, uh, believe it or not, I came when the joke happened. I don't know if that's interesting. You kept texting me the fact that you kept coming during the movie, so I wasn't sure what you were referring to and I was slightly worried that you're talking about Godzilla's thick, thick ass which we all know that is the actual plot of the movie. There's a specific shot I have in mind when Godzilla looks back and you can just nicely see the shape of his beautiful ass. Now that is a real character. The thing about this movie too is just like brain dead. It's almost hard to talk about. Now I'm not complaining too much of how stupid it is. I, I enjoy that these movies are getting more and more dumb as the series goes along. I can't wait to see how, how much dumber they get by the end. Hey guys, remember Kong is in an island so we have to have some very thin reason to get him outside of his island. The excuse that they need is that Kong is able to take them to the hollow earth even though they have a satellite imaging of how to get to the hollow earth and later in the movie they go to a tunnel that they already had built that leads directly to the hollow earth so I didn't really understand why they needed Kong I can't explain the explanation is that uh, I don't know who wrote the script but I'm gonna assume it's a he because Hollywood is sexist he was writing the script and on his phone, he just kept looking at really funny Tide Pod memes and he was a little bit distracted. So it didn't quite write, you know, a perfect, all the loose ends tied and shit. But the point is, it all culminated and we got to see Godzilla fight King Kong. 
in Hong Kong. And then a big robot Godzilla fights both of them. And then Lance Reddick shows up and says, This is the dude we feed. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? I mean, that's why we're here, Matt. It is really a, a movie about family. That's what's so powerful about it. It's not about us violently destroying Hong Kong, <laughs> not leaving any building left at the end where there's just ash and destruction and death and we don't pay attention to any of those victims and their families. No, it's about this military man going to the hollow earth with their really ugly looking ship so monkey can get axe. That axe was so fucking cool. And how like Godzilla shot his laser into the axe and like it got like all super powered. It was awesome. The funny thing about this movie as well is that the weirdness that I didn't expect is that it had a lot of nods to the original. Even to the point where a massive plot point is how Kong gets saved by a electricity, gets more powerful question mark, and helps defeat the big monster in the end. And I was just shocked beyond belief that even like an ounce of similarity was able to be found. That's cool that they paid homage to the old movie like that. Would you say that it's as good as this one? Or would you say that, which one do you think is better? As a movie, probably the original. Really? Okay. Because they don't have any of the nonsense of like Hollow Earth or like a bunch of other lore that they want to set up for future movies. They just have new casters telling you where the monsters are and then the military shows up to try to lead the monsters to each other so they can have a cool fight. Was Lance Reddick in the, in the classic one though? This is the dude. He was not in it, so it might be actually this one is better. You're right. I'm sorry. There you go. See, that's food. It also didn't have a Tide Pod joke back in the 60s, so. They didn't? They didn't. I know. It's. What the fuck? It's very. <laughs> what were they thinking? I didn't know they were going to eat them. You brought up something that I actually wanted to ask. It's like my only note. Okay. I was I was eating when I was watching and I wasn't really paying, <laughs> paying attention. For this small seed, uh, when Go Kong goes underwater, he's first he's chained up to something. But then he stops being chained up. Do you, do you know why he stopped being chained up? Because I kind of missed that part. I think that they just throw a bomb in the ocean. And then he's not chained up anymore and he comes back to the boat. You shouldn't be asking questions. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't mean to interrogate you. I, had, I don't have the answers that I don't think the movie has the answers. So that's, I just don't want us to uh, hurt our brains trying to understand what actually happened. So I know how you'll really like uh, Millie Bobby Brown in the movie. I know you, you think she's a terrific actress. Godzilla had left us in peace. You provoked him into war. It's thinking for itself now. Maybe another word with T. Maybe terrible. Can you hear me? I'm in Hong Kong! How did you like the weird conspiracy theory characterization that she was given in this movie? Uh, was she given the conspiracy theory characterization or was that Paperboy? They're both the same because she is a fan of his podcast. She also wants to shower in bleach. He drinks bleach. Showers with it. And I, I don't know if this movie might get sued for getting some dumb teenagers to shower in bleach to protect themselves from government conspiracies. And then a movie like 10 years in the future is going to make a joke about it like way too late and the cycle will just keep repeating itself. Godzilla 5 will make the joke about the bleach shower. I Listen, listen, I don't want to be mean to Millie Bobby Brown, but I do have a little, a little problem for performance, okay? There's a line and I'm trying to remember it. Just give me a second. Give me a second. She says, I think it's romantic. Do you know what scene I'm talking about? I do remember what you're talking about. She says, I think it's romantic in the sense that he's breaking in. I don't know if that was referring to him breaking into the facility or him showering in bleach. I think it's the fact that like he keeps a shot or not a shot, but like a bottle of whiskey, a canister. But in any case, she has an American accent the whole movie. But when she says, I think it's romantic, she says it in a British accent. And I'm only bringing this up because I want you to play it for your audience, okay? I think it's romantic. I want you to play the scene where she says, I think it's romantic because she totally says it in a British accent. How did no one notice that? It's romantic. To be fair, I don't remember many lines besides- Dump the monkey. Also Godzilla lasered through the planet, which is just- 
from time to time they try to explain how things are happening and I think really that is to the detriment of the movie because a big plot point of the Team Kong is that they want to go to the Hollow Earth to get data on a type of energy source and later in the movie the lady that keeps saying dump the monkey she's able to get the data of the energy and because she got information in this energy source they're able to download the energy into the big robot godzilla it's fucked up how that lady died i kind of i kind of liked her no, 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 no. you know what i i think i related to her the most out of any character just because she was like really snappy and cute. She was the only character that cared about... Dump the monkey! Yeah, that's what it's all about. Wasn't she the daughter of the Hispanic CEO? Yes. The funny thing is she dies and we never get any sort of reaction at all. Well, he doesn't get a chance to know that she dies though. But that just makes me question why are they related at all then? Because it, it literally does not matter. I almost feel like it's hard to pick apart a movie like this just because it's so... I mean, it's Godzilla versus King Kong. <laughs> The versus part, that's why you're here, and you enjoy the versus part, and every other part is just kind of, you know... He consumes a ton of bleach. He drinks bleach. If you want like a human story, you could watch the first Godzilla movie. Which is weird that they're like in the same franchise, right? They started somewhat grounded, and then Kong was a little bit sillier, and then King of the Monsters is just getting dumber, and this one is just the dumbest of them all. So it's better than King of the Monsters, because it hadn't fully committed to the stupidity like this one did so it's at least this one is a it knows what it is and it does what it wants to do it might get a little bit old after the 15 minute mark where you just keep seeing them completely decimate hong kong i was just laughing at how much gratuitous destruction was involved and how much they seem to hate that island my my conspiracy theory about the hong kong part just to be clear is that legendary is owned by a big chinese company uh, so i'm guessing that this this movie is gonna be this will be xin jinping's favorite movie of all time when they get to hong kong they don't give a single care how many people die how many buildings get destroyed it's just come completely gone there's nothing left it will not be reconstructed it's just a wasteland now maybe no one was at work though maybe everybody stayed home everybody left it was the hong kong version of independence day when they got independence from china and that's why they got decimated by mecha godzilla so they <laughs> learned their lesson <laughs> oh no can you and i both just quickly pray for hong kong just for like 20 seconds Okay, that's when you put text, you know, couple... Yeah, no, it's so good. It's gonna be a you will remember me playing in the background. It's gonna be great. <laughs> yeah, with like some picture of like, you know, painting out of some like Hong Kong protest. Yeah, you got it. You got it. I'm actually kind of glad that they gave so little time for each of the humans. They put so many more humans in this movie than before, but every single one of them gets less screen time than ever before and you don't get to understand anything that's happening and the movie just goes by until you get to the next fight scene and it, it doesn't matter it's fine if you're looking for big monster punching big monster the movie this is it you're, you, you're good to go to put my thoughts on it as clearly as i could i liked it when the verses was happening and when it wasn't happening i was just kind of bored i will say though like when i watched batman vs superman and doomsday came out i was like fuck it's doomsday time i was enjoying the batman vs superman shit when i watched godzilla vs kong and mecha godzilla comes out i'm still enjoying myself i thoroughly enjoyed how like schlocky and fucking stupid it got I thought Mega Godzilla was fucking sick. I thought he was cute. I thought he was handsome. He was super powerful, super epic. Even though he wasn't like, you know, connected to the guy that was controlling him, he, I guess, <laughs> I guess he achieved self-consciousness. Because a child, a little baby wrote this and the robot started beating up Godzilla just all by itself. <laughs> that was super awesome. You're missing, you missed out the plot point where one of Ghidorah's calls from the previous movie, the, the monster with three heads that communicated telepathically. Once the energy got downloaded through a computer, the mecha got super powerful. And I think the what it's trying to tell me, I don't know if that's for real, is that the skull of King Ghidorah possessed the mecha Godzilla. Oh! 
That's why it's able to fight by itself. It's thinking for itself now. I wouldn't blame anyone for having a good time while watching this movie. I I had a good time. Okay, it was entertainingly schlocky. What, what are we gonna say that it didn't do that it did want to do? It's it it, it was intentionally stupid. That, that it did it. I think it's I think it's just, I think it's Matt. This is the first time I'm gonna say this. Okay. I haven't tried this sentence about five times now. All right, this is a completely natural uh, segue from your sentence that you just said. Okay. I think it's successful at everything it wanted to do. That's it. Do you want to hear my Peter Griffin impression from Family Guy? Give, give me your favorite moment from Godzilla vs. Kong and your Peter Griffin voice. Oh no, I'm Lance Reddick. This is the day we feared. I guess this constitutes as we having talked about Godzilla vs. Kong. That was perfect. Okay, goodbye. Say goodbye now. Say bye. Do it. Bye.